Well, 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 welcome back. It's National Unplugging Day, and he's here to show us how to do it. Please welcome back U.S. Editor-in-Chief of Tech Radar, Lance Ulanoff. Lance, we all need a little digital detox. Kelly and I subscribe. Yes. Well, it's a great time to do a digital detox where you're sort of stepping away, you know, setting up, finding, like, time, whether it's an hour, 15 minutes, an hour, a week, you work up to it where you are not engaging with your screens, with social media, mm. with all of that, giving yourself. And, you know, honestly, if you're going on vacation, what's the point of telling everybody you're on vacation through social media? There are reasons, by the way, not to do that because mm -hmm. you don't need oh, to let so someone many know. Reasons, yeah. But also, it takes you out of the experience. When you get back, you can bore people with your photos, but not, <laughs> not during the actual event. So you got to set realistic goals, right? You're not alone in this, right? You can't just say to your whole family, all right, vacation, nobody, nobody online, nobody doing th anything. You kind of have to work up to it. You have to help everybody. You can start initially with a little bit of time, but work up to it, especially if you're in the lead up to the National Unplugging Day or even a vacation where you all want to really take a break. You said that there are people that need, re need to rebuild their social skills, and I, I see this it, particularly in young people. They don't yeah. seem to know how to have a conversation. I mean, yes, it's young people, but it's all of us, really. You know, we say, oh, I'm in touch with people all the time. I'm texting them. I, you know, I, we see the social media, but you're not engaging face-to-face. -face. You're not talking to them, so you've got to start to practice, and sometimes it's very simple things like, hey, dinner's ready. What do you do? Text the kids upstairs. Text right. the kids upstairs. Mm -hmm. No. Get up. Go walk to them, see them face to face, and go, hey, dinner is ready. They'll be shocked. Or to just see ring you. the bell. Ring, yeah. ring, the bell. ring the bell on the and, terrace. And by the way, your phone, it works for calls. So surprise people. <laughs> and make oh. phone calls. Okay. So how, how can your phone help you with the break? Well, it has all these settings. That's the thing. Right now, your iPhone is tracking your screen time okay. for you. It's letting you know how long you spent in total across all of your apps. So it's just all your Android phone is doing the exact same thing. How much time you're spending on individual apps, even how much time you're spending looking at the phone while driving, never do it, but it'll let you know if you were doing it. So it has all of these tools that can give you a real world picture of what's going on with your life and starting to actually get control of it because you can set limits at an app level. You know, I don't want to use this app, you can set downtime. Mm. Do people have like real screen time addictions? Like is there a withdrawal that, that happens? There's the, you know, I said, because the FOMO, right? right? Fear of missing out. Oh, I don't know what's going on. I didn't see it. You're living through other people's lives, but you're also maybe feeling disconnected. So yes, it's, it is very, hard to sort of disconnect from people. So at bedtime, you light the incense, wave the sage, right. and look at your screen, or put the screen down? Yeah, put the screen down. Okay. You know, start to, you know, first of all, your phone can help you with the wind down to bedtime, all right? You set the time, it turns the screen a different color, it turns right. off different notifications. So but then, inside your bedroom, you often have your phone next to you. And then what do you do? You pick it up and you check it before mm -hmm. bed, by the way, and then you're woken up again. So don't do that. Think about getting, like, a digital clock, literally a digital readout. And I believe, Ryan, you're doing... I have doing... one you have to hit the table for it to light up. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And by the way, if you want to, don't want to go completely away from that, you could get Alexa on one. So it still is a digital readout, but you got Alexa, and you can do things that I, I do. Hey, Alexa, what's the weather tomorrow? So I know what clothes to wear. That's how I pick this outfit. So how do you suggest for people who have a hard time with the idea of getting off of their technology for a little downtime, how do, what do you suggest they do to occupy their time? Well, that's it. It's a replacement theory, right? They have to really be able to put something else in that time, especially if you start to follow any of this, you're going to find you have more free time. You remember those things called hobbies, you know, that people mm, used to do? Swimming, Drawing, well, music, languages. knitting, anything that's sort of, by the way, uses a different part of your brain, mm -hmm. and you're engaging, and you, you can do that, and you can do it on your own, start going out outdoor activities. You know, if again, I always call this sort of a group activity, because when you look at someone else using their phone, you feel like, oh, I should take out my phone. Or so as opposed on the table, to is... saying, let's, first of all, no dinner table phones. Second of all, let's have a group, let's play a board game. Let's do, let's all go outside. Sometimes my family and I will all go outside and play basketball. Now, when I say play ba basketball, I mean horse. That's all we do. Because right. anyone can do that. And it just, again, you're doing something and you're reconnecting with people while you're doing it. What about people who are exercising but they use 
an app on their phone for that. Like some people walk and listen to yeah. a podcast. Some people, <laughs> walk you know, through the well, city well, use the, the app on broadcast. to... My wife and I have a joke that I do artisanal gardening, right? Artisanal I'm in, back in my yard, clipping at things, but I'm always listening to a podcast. And I honestly right. feel like that's because it's, it's actually... Podcasts are weird because they're engaging in a different way. Screens are different because on your phone, it's a pathway to all different things. It's a pathway to email, to your notifications. Whereas with the podcast or something like that, you really are kind of focusing in a little bit and doing a task. What about taking social media breaks, getting away from that? Well, I think it's a great idea. And it's actually really easy to do because you remove the social media apps from your phone. Now, people are afraid to do that because they feel like, oh my gosh, I took everything off. No, you didn't. You just took the app off. And if you're done with your break and you want to re-engage, you reinstall it, and everything is still there. But it's a great thing to do right before you go on a trip, you know, just vacation. Take them off the screen. Take them off. Right, so I, see I have an phone. announcement to make. You don't need to <laughs> announce that you're taking a break from social media. <laughs> you really don't. You can just take the break, and when you come back... Everything people, will be fine. Well, I, that's... Yeah, but, people are like, I'm taking a break from social media. And by the way, people don't always notice. You think they may notice, but they don't. <laughs> uh, we like this day. Thank you for the great tips, Lance. Kellyandryan.com for all of those tips and more. And we will return after this break.